Hello again, welcome back to Legally Cited. This is BGFH, and I am back for a kind of a quick video. Um, didn't originally intend to do this video right now, but I figured now is a good time as any. Um, <laughs> I was going to do a Windows 10 video eventually, um, but I figured I'd just do a quick overview uh, video now that a couple of screen readers are working with it. And also, um, to start this video, I will uh, apologize to, I don't remember who you are, uh, but who you know who you are. Um, <clears throat> I got a comment on the channel earlier today, and it was a comment for one of my system access videos. And they were actually asking about whether system access worked with Dragon Naturally Speaking. Well, I had meant to reply, however, I was using my YouTube app on my phone because I actually got <clears throat> the notification on my phone saying that there was a comment. And lo and behold, there recently there are some definitely accessibility issues that weren't in that app before, like when you are using the app and you scroll down from video, like a lot of times it'll just say dimmed. I think is what it says, and then you can't really get anything out of voiceover until you close the YouTube app and come in. Well, apparently there's another bug, and it wasn't reading something else correctly. I meant to try to reply to the comment, and instead it erased the comment. So I it did say, oh, comment erased. I'm like, no, don't do that. Um, so whoever you are, I didn't mean to purge your comment. I'm sorry. But... Um, I will answer your question though, right here, seeing as how uh, um, we are back. And system access, I don't have a lot of experience with Dragon. Uh, I've used it a little bit here and there in the past, but I don't use much speech recognition. What I will say is that I have tried it briefly at one time. And it might technically, like, you can kind of sort of use them together, but System Access may not read the some of the interface elements as you are dictating. So one of the things with, like, Dragon software, uh, it will pop up, like, anticipated words that you mean, or, like, when you say, correct that. And then it brings up a list of words uh, to choose from, like, if you're fixing a, dicta a dictation issue. If I remember right, System Access does not read that type of information. And I don't know if it will do that even with like using the virtual mouse. So you may be a little sketchy there. Um, you, however, might be able to use Windows speech recognition. Now, I remember even back when Windows 7 came out, um, Matt Campbell, the uh, wizard programmer behind System Access, um, he did a audio demonstration quite a while ago on Windows 7 <clears throat> speech dictation, and um, he, you can even use it with the initial tutorial thing like the, the voice tutorial as you're getting your microphone ready. Um, it actually, from what I've used of it, it works pretty well. There may be a couple little glitches with it, but overall, actually, I found uh, that it worked surprisingly well. So I would say start with that. If you're using System Access, try starting with, um, try starting with Windows uh, Speech Recognition. And then if you already have Dragon, you can try it, but I, I won't guarantee that System Access, uh, you can always try SA to go if you don't own System Access, just go to www.sa2go.com, try that with Dragon and see what it does. I can't guarantee anything, but there you go. So while I'm here, uh, I figure I'll give you just a few brief uh, impressions and show you a couple of things with Windows 10. I did get Windows 10 eh, probably about a month ago now. Shortly after, probably about a week, week and a half after I did my video on the Windows technical preview uh, where I showed you a little snippets of of the operating system. So 
not a lot has changed as far as what I covered there. Um, you, if I hit the Windows key, I am running System Access right now. Cortana, search box, editable text, blank. You start up in your search box, just like you would with Windows 7 in their start menu, or Windows 8. I can search. I can also down arrow. Start, account picture for Jesse Anderson button. Most used, list, Internet Explorer. So then on the left-hand side, you have a most used, so... Steam. System Access. ASUS Welcome. Movie Maker. I'm not sure why ASU or ASUS Welcome is in there, but sure, whatever. Notepad. Notepad. I use that on a fair amount, a uh, fair bit. Places. List. File Explorer. Places, and then you have your File Explorer. Settings. Settings. Power button. And then, you're, then there's an actual power thing. So people who are confused, you know, it's like, why do you go to start and then shut down? Or, you know, even on Windows 8, it wasn't really clear necessarily where to go to turn off your computer. Um, there it is, and there from there you will have your restart, shutdown, switch user, you know, log off, whatever. All apps with new apps available button. All apps <clears throat> with new apps available. This kind of brings up like a Windows 7-ish start menu, but it kind of works like a little tree view sort of thing. To be perfectly honest with you, unless there's something like you absolutely need in the start menu, even in Windows 7, <laughs> I haven't really used the start menu in years for the most part um, I either use the rare desktop icon or I search I mean because that's one of the beauties of Windows 7 8 and 10 is that even if it's something you're not exactly sure what it's called you know give it a shot you know you can like if I List, reflect, Cortana, search box, text, here. link. you know let's say that I want um, I don't have office on here yet so let's say I just type word Weather, WordPad, desktop app. All right, sure, WordPad, sure. Let's Word, go to WordPad. Document, WordPad, home tab, alt, there we H, go. rich text window, editable text, blank. We're in. Sam uh, Net Home. If I want to do some setting in control panel, let's say I don't remember exactly what I... Cortana, search box, is, editable text, say, blank. I say uninstall. Uplay. Uninstall NVDA, desktop no, app. I don't want that. Pro programs and features, apps and features, system settings, apps and features. Apps and features, that's what it's called in Windows 10. And if you go there, there's your traditional, like, you know, you arrow down through your list of programs and hit your application key and then uninstall that is, that's pretty much the same List, so reflector <clears throat> whether it's a program an app a setting you know if I, I could type in like power options or battery you know it, it'll kind of smartly do you know the search works really well and even from windows 7 like i said i rarely use the all programs uh, area of the start menu haven't in years now search also box, edit, start account menu, picture for I Steam. tab show junk list button places list settings uh, okay. power button all apps with new apps available button okay this is where I'm still a little bit unclear like even with system access like you can kind of tab but on the right hand side now you it's Windows 8 or Windows 10 has kind of a combination view where on the left you have your traditional Windows 7-esque start menu and then on the right hand side you have your little grid of Windows apps like you would see on your Windows 8 start screen but it doesn't take up the whole screen you know you just have this nice little area that you can you can add you can remove you can drag and um, you know move things around if you want to reorder the, th the items in there not really sure. I haven't really been able to figure out how to drag and move things around with the keyboard. But if you're low vision or you have help, like I said, you can you can um, drag things around that way. So these are your you know your what they used to call metro apps. You have life at a glance group header list calendar calendar mail Amazon local S and photos photos Microsoft Edge. Now Edge is the new browser in Windows 10. Um, it doesn't work yet with screen readers pretty much at all yet. Um, system access really doesn't work with it. NVDA doesn't work with it. I don't believe JAWS works with it yet. And it's not really their fault. Microsoft actually really kind of dropped the ball and didn't implement some stuff that was needed for accessibility for these pieces of software and they really didn't get in that information to the developers of said assistive technology so that's why my internet explorer is still being used 
um, and you want to probably I would highly recommend setting your default browser to Internet Explorer that way when you open something from an email from an app from whatever it will open up in Internet Explorer for now I'm really curious about Edge because I don't know supposedly it's supposed to be pretty fast I know the regular sighted community has said that it doesn't really have a lot of uh, add-ons and extra functionality it's really basic right now um, which you know may be a bad thing for some people but honestly when I use a browser I just want to browse the web I don't want a lot of extra crap um, you know, I want to be able to surf the web page, maybe block some ads, and there you go. <laughs> That's really all I want. Um, and then down below, you have a different category here. Weather, rain, 73 degrees, 80 degrees, 72 degrees, Ew. Washington, D.C. Oh, why are you? Okay, whatever. You're on Washington, D.C. weather? Sure, why not? Whatever. Play and explore group header, list. Play and explore. So here's where you get all your apps like... Xbox. My Xbox app. This is a really, really sweet app that I've really grown to like in Windows 10 because I can stream my Xbox One content directly to my Windows PC. That is, I did a little bit of an intro video on that. I think I showed you a quick demo of that on my first Xbox One video for the Perfect Dark, uh, the game that I covered. <clears throat> but it's really sweet, uh, and it's a way that I don't have to buy a whole bunch of extra crap, a whole bunch of extra hardware, or software to be able to record Xbox One games. Um, I really like it actually even when I'm not recording sometimes I'll just play it in front of my computer because that way I can have my Xbox thing and I can just alt tab to something else and and go there. Um, Minecraft Windows 10 Edition Beta. Oh uh, you know what that's something I still have to cover on the channel I installed it almost right after I installed Windows 10 and I just haven't actually gotten to look at it yet it's a really basic version of Minecraft, um, but it is, is a Minecraft Windows 10 edition. It is available for, if you already own Minecraft, you can go put in your uh, Mojang username account and stuff and uh, activate it through your Microsoft account for free. So that's a pretty cool thing. Curious to see when that gets updated because then, then the, what I've heard about it is the draw distance is way, way, way better because it's better optimized, doesn't use Java. So, that's something we'll take a look at here on the channel in the future at some point. Movies and TV. Movies and TV. Groove Music. Groove Music, that is Microsoft's renamed, and I don't know, it was Zune Music, and then it was something else, and now it's Groove. I can't even keep track anymore. I don't really use it, but there you go. Get Office. Try Office 365 for one month. I'm really tempted to do that, actually. Um... Office 365, Office 2016 just came out, so it's just like a year, you know, it's a yearly subscription. Um, it's like 99 bucks a year. You get it on five computers, not just PCs. You can use it on uh, PCs. Uh, you, if you have a Mac, you can try Office 6, 2016 for Mac, which has also made improvements in accessibility. You can use it on iOS or Android, wherever. So that's pretty cool. Groove News, News, five, Money, DOW, 16,049.3. These are just your general Windows, like your apps that you would get with Windows 8 kind of thing. I haven't really used any of them. The only one I've used is Xbox. Like the Mail app doesn't really, that doesn't work yet. Um, it's kind of busted. So you really want to use Outlook or use a web, you know, use some other, maybe web, um, a web access or Outlook or a Microsoft Outlook or you know, maybe Thunderbird or something. Um, so it just depends. But mail doesn't really work well yet. And um, <coughs> the app, the apps and the app store are a little iffy right now. I haven't even really gone into the app store all that much myself. It's something that I need to test some more. Xbox. Play and explore group header make list. Sure. Life at a glance group header list. We Microsoft app. Weather. So Rain. let's see if I go to weather. Let's just see what it does. Weather. Search. Editable text. Blank. Okay. Search. Uh, let's say... St. Paul MN. MN. So I read the search box. End of page. What do we got here? Heading. Forecast. All right. Button. Add to favorites. Button. More. Search. Editable text. Button. More. Search. St. Paul, Minnesota. 57. Degree. 
Button. Fahrenheit selected. Press to change to Celsius. Button. Fahrenheit selected. Press to change to Celsius. Sunny. Feels like. 57. Degree. Wind. 6 mph. Barometer. 30.24 in. Visibility. 9 miles. Humidity. 39%. percent Dew point. 32. Degree. List. List. Daily forecast badge. 229. I'll have to figure out a way and see if I can make that my home address so I can, you know, it'll just come up. You know, because that's what the nice thing with these live tiles for these apps are, is like some of them, you know, where it showed it, what was it, Washington, D.C. If I set this, you know, for my home, you know, then I could just be like, oh, go to my start menu, look at the big number, or just arrow to it with the screen reader, and it'll tell me what I really basically want to know. Um, so that's cool. Some of them will work, some of them won't. Your mileage will start definitely button. vary. That's kind of the start menu. Um, now, you also have, with uh, Windows 10, Cortana. I've demoed this a little bit in the Windows 10 preview video, but if I hit Windows C, what's the weather like? I Cortana, can't connect at the moment. moment. Text, blank. What? Try again in a little bit. That's never happened. Start button. Of course when I'm recording. Of course you would. <laughs> um, let's try that again. Um, what was the score of the Vikings game? I can't Cortana, connect. Search box. Moment. Editable text. Blank. I have no idea. Let me just go to Task Internet Switcher. YouTube Internet Explorer. Quick okay, look. So Assault Android Cat. List. Reflector 2. Let's try it one more time. What was the score of the Vikings game? On Sunday, the Vikings defeated go. the Chargers 31 to 14. Dang right we did. That was a sweet game. Uh, we played like a real good football team there. I'm. I'm if they can keep playing like that and avoid the absolute travesty that was opening day, um, we won't even talk about the 49ers game anymore. But uh, if they can uh, keep going in that, I'm looking forward to the rest of our season, where it seems like we're kind of shaping home. up a little bit. So I can, you know, I, I've covered a little bit of what it can do. You know, you can ask it questions just like you can the Siri, just like you can the Echo. Um, it's actually pretty good like with basic questions a lot of times it'll just open up if it doesn't know what it's doing or it doesn't know how to directly answer your question it'll just open the edge browser which again doesn't do us screen reader users a lot of good but it'll bring up like a bing page of some results that you know might be what you're looking for and sadly you're going to have to go back and watch my other video to see it it actually, well, Cortana sing, actually sings really good. It, it's pretty funny. But the main thing, she doesn't sing Soft Kitty anymore. That's really a bummer. She did it really funny in the in the beta. She actually was really pretty good. But you can, you know, you can do goofy stuff like, you know, have her sing you a song or tell you, you know, uh, tell me a joke. What do you do when you see a space man? Park in it, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. One thing I will say is, you know, whether it's, you know, singing or just talking or, you know, telling a joke, I really like her natural inflection. I mean, I think it's actually quite a bit ahead of, well, definitely ahead of Siri. And I think even from what I've seen of the Google Plus or like the Google, uh, hey Google or uh, okay Google thing, um, I like her. Cortana's kind of neat. And I have found myself just in not a lot but every once in a while asking her to you know for help with something and I guess the more you use her you know like it'll kind of integrate with your browser especially if you start using edge once we're able to um, <clears throat> the more you use her you know it's kind of like this Google now predictive stuff where it'll she'll try to you know kind of bring things to your attention as you're needing them or before you need them so that's kind of neat um, but yeah, I mean, usually, I don't know why it didn't connect there those couple times. I've really never had a problem with that since the full version of Windows 10 has come out. That happened in the beta, but not really since. But, you know, whatever. The other thing I will say about Cortana is if you are doing any kind of recording, be it YouTube, for YouTube or for audio recordings, podcasts, whatever, you there's a setting called um, Hey Cortana, you really not might not want to enable that feature. <laughs> I was trying to do a video in a game, and I don't know. It ha funny enough, it happened to me like twice in fairly rapid succession, where it thought that I was addressing her. So 
my game kind of paused for a second and Cortana came up and then my recording software went janky and it, it was just a mess. So yeah, if you're going to be doing recording, you might just want to leave that, um, you know, the, the Hey Cortana thing um, alone or not enable it. So that's your start menu and your Cortana. <coughs> your taskbar, you know, if I am... Um... Start button. Ask me anything button. So there's your ask me anything. You can also type in the search, like for Cortana. So you can uh, you can you can basically when you go to your start menu you can uh, tab and you can t uh, you can type in a question to Cortana if you don't want to speak or whatever. Start listening button. Start listening. That's the equivalent of your Windows C. It's just easier to hit Windows C for Cortana. YouTube Internet Explorer menu button list open. And now here's your running applications, just like you would have with Windows 7 or Windows 8 on your taskbar. And I'm a firm believer in, it's not a lot of them, but I, I'm a firm believer in at least pinning four or five items to my taskbar, because then you can still use that, where if you know what order they're in, you know I have on my home computer, I have Windows, uh, the first one is Internet Explorer. The next one over... Menu button, Steam. Steam. Button, Minecraft. Minecraft. Button, Volume Mixer. Volume Mixer. Those I use all the time, so I know I don't even have to go anywhere. I can just hit Windows 1, Windows 2, 3, 4, whatever, and I can just instantly open those applications, or I can um, move to them if they are already open in the background. So that's kind of cool. Um, your Windows B still works. Lex Media Server button. That's your system tray. Button. One drive up to date. Button. Safely remove hardware and media. is actually integrated within Windows 10, so if you sign in with your Microsoft ID, you won't even really have to think about it. You're just, your OneDrive will be all set up and ready to go. Button, Bandit Cam. Button, Steam. Button, C Cleaner Monitoring is active. Button, Malware Bytes Anti-Malware Home. Premium, Program Version, 2.1.8 point. Button, System Access. So, and you know, see, you see System Access is actually reading everything pretty well so far. Button, System Access Home Server. Do not shut down. Button, Fully Charged, 100%. Yeah, it's a desktop, so of course it's 100%. Button, Network 2, Internet Access. But anyway, you get the point. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you. Um, there's a new command, Windows A. Action Center, list, can't install updates. Select this message to fix, received on Moon 2. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, some kind of update couldn't install. So Windows A is your Action Center. This is sort of like your, kind of think of it almost like a combination of if you're using an iPhone, think of it like a mixture between your Notification Center and your Control Center, because that's exactly what it is. Uh, instead of the instead of those little balloons that used to pop up, like in Windows XP and even Windows 7, now everything runs through this action center. So on the top, I have... Did Cortana recognize what you said? Received on Sunday. I have a notification about Cortana. They're trying to improve it, so sometimes they'll ask me, you know, did did she do well? Get Office Try Office 365 for Here's one month. Received on Sunday. Notification. Get Office Try Office 360... Get I'm Office just, Try Office 365 for one running. month. Get Office Try Office 300. Uh, dismiss this notification button. I can dismiss this notification if I want to, so let me just tab. List. Notifications from Get Office Group. Dismiss all notifications in this group button. So I, if I have a whole bunch of notifications in one group, I can just clear all that section, so that's nice. If you do, especially if you can't use the Mail app because of accessibility, I would definitely recommend, <clears throat> by default, um, the Mail application does send you notifications, so every time you get an email... I took that out of the notification center because a I couldn't read it with uh, the mail app anyway. So I said, you know what? I don't want. I didn't want to see the mail uh, notifications. I'll either go to the web or I'll just use my phone to check email, which is what I do 95% of the time. So that would be a recommendation. Like I said, especially if you're using any kind of a screen reader, then you can't really use the mail app. You may want to just. Uh, I think if you application key, or I don't remember exactly how I did it. Uh, or there's a settings under notification center where uh, notification center settings were, or action center, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm calling it the wrong word. But there's a setting where you can tell it which items you want to include and not include. Collapse button. Um, Tablet mode button. Then you go down to the bottom. So the, up there, those are your like notifications. But then on the bottom, this is where the control center comparison to iOS is. Because here you have a lot of quick use items. This is especially handy if you have a if, a, if you have a laptop or a tablet 
um, because you can access it through this like a little icon in the system tray or if you have a keyboard you can like I said use this Windows A and then you can access things like tablet mode turn that on and off connect button no button connect to Wi-Fi all settings button all settings VPN button quiet hours button quiet hours I don't exactly remember what that does I think that just kind of mutes like notifications and stuff like that location button pressed airplane mode button pressed you can turn airplane mode on and off clear all button why did airplane mode button pressed why do you say airplane mode is on that's clear not... all button list get office try office 365 oh, anyway. for notifications from get list reflector so two kind of signs 1.92 kilo so that's kind of a nice little um i kind of like that actually because one of the things was you'd get these little balloons and it would say something, and if you didn't react to them right away, they, a lot of them, some of them would disappear, and you didn't know if it was just something that popped up, or if there was some action you had to do in your <clears throat> system tray. So I kind of find that the action center is sort of nice. I, I do kind of like that. Um, if I go to my Windows Explorer, this PC Windows list e, desktop not selected. Remember, in back in the preview video, it went to some recent documents and things like that. I used that for a while, and I thought, you know what, I, I access, you know, in this computer in particular, I have three hard drives in there. Yeah, my SSD and then my two other hard drives. So I access those for different purposes a lot, and I just, I, I rather, I, I went to the settings, and I, I chose the traditional My PC option instead of the recent and favorites and stuff it's just a radio button under folder options i believe it's just a it's one of your first radio buttons that you can choose now devices and videos here, folders group desktop documents so i have desktop this is kind of almost like how windows 8 behaved you had desktop, your desktop documents documents downloads downloads music music pictures, pictures videos videos and then when 7 pro 64 C space used 20% available space 381 gigabytes for your 476 gigabytes so system access is reading all of that nicely new volume D space used 40% available space 2.16 terabytes free of 3.63 terabytes yeah that's my games and recordings folder so there's that's being that hard drive is already getting kind of full new volume E space used 28% available space 2.62 terabytes free of 3.63 terabytes DVD RW drive and then, F so then Shenmue the movie have... available space zero bytes oh, free yeah, of three point new DVD volume still in there so then you have your DVD drive so that's pretty much the same the one thing that especially if you're coming from Windows 7 the one thing you're not probably used to is if I hit the alt button application menu drop down grid button alt properties button alt new folder button disabled alt to create a new folder you now have a ribbon there is no longer file edit view blah 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 help <laughs> you now have a ribbon to deal with so a lot of your key options customize quick access toolbar button are right there on your list new volume ribbon so that application menu drop down grid button alt f open new window properties to. button alt one um so that's windows explorer i mean it's yes the ribbon is different but once you get a couple options tweaked the you know it's it doesn't really matter because i hardly ever use it um, I, I, you know, if I'm making a new folder, <clears throat> I still use my right click or application key a lot of times. You know, uh, I use the right click a lot for like open with and creating shortcuts or making folders, whatever I'm doing. Uh, I use that a lot. Now, I do have a couple of other windows open. I'm going to show you Alt Tab works a little bit differently. YouTube Internet Explorer. I'm holding Alt down and so I can just tab. Sam Net Home. Steam. I have three options open. YouTube Internet Explorer. Sam Net Home. Steam. Now, the thing that I kind of don't like, I mean, I like the fact that they're bigger. I like the fact that each little window is like a, it's like a full thumbnail of what each window is showing. I love that. But as a low vision user, let's say I don't have a screen reader running. YouTube Internet Explorer. Um, look at the kind of the highlight around the left one now, which is Internet Explorer. I kind of wish that stood out a little bit more. I wish it was maybe a little thicker or had some way to stand out a little bit more, especially when a lot of these windows have white backgrounds. Maybe be able to change that highlight color. I'm not sure. Haven't found a way to do that, but it would be maybe kind of nice um, to be able to do. So if I alt it again, see it's on there. It's just a thin kind of a line. So you know, I can see where some people, if you have a whole bunch of stuff open, uh, maybe have a harder time seeing which one is highlighted if you don't actually have speech going. 
Sam Net Home 2. My newspaper. Link. Let's go to desktop again. List. Reflector 2. Size. One point. Now you can also hit Windows tab behaves differently too. Remember in Windows 7 it kind of did that little like 3D tile thing. Now if I hit Windows tab. Group. Running applications. List. Sam Net Home. go. It brings up everything like a quick launch sort of thing in a <clears throat> just in a row. Like I only have three right now, but if I had more, it would just add another row. So this one I just totally let go. Dismiss tasks with Sam at home. I can take my mouse. Dismiss tasks switching window button. Sam at home. And if I'm low vision and still using combination keyboard and mouse, I can actually YouTube Internet Explorer. Steam. This YouTube Internet Explorer. And let's say I want that. YouTube one. Internet Explorer. Oh, YouTube tab. Search. Editable text. Link. So that's kind of a nice view just to see everything you have at once and. You know, kind of an alternative to your alt tab. List. Reflector 2. I mean, Internet Explorer is pretty much the same. You know, you're still running, like, what is it, Internet Explorer 11 or something like that. Um, even before System Access fully supported Windows 10 or even really supported it, uh, the one part that it did work well with was Internet Explorer because that's pretty much unchanged from 8 uh, until we get Edge support. Um... There are a lot of under the hood changes, you know, like I said, there's more security, there's uh, SkyDrive in integration, there's, um, or OneDrive, there's, um, I know I'm missing some other features, but I mean, just overall, you know, I, I can't imagine that a lot of people use the apps all that much, you know, most people, maybe on a tablet you would, and but on a like on a desktop or laptop most people are probably going to be using standard desktop applications um one thing i can try Cortana, search box exactly editable text sure. link let's find out together store trusted windows store app ali express store bbc for setup in sign in strength 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 search store store to door store reservoir right stores at mall of america stores in watertown why my stuff okay web that store trusted windows store ali express store um <laughs> I meant it was giving me all sorts of weird options. That was really surprising. I was hoping that would just be a quick way to go to the app store. Search box, um, edible text. Also, link. one thing I do want to mention that has not changed, it's a good time to mention. For you low vision users, one bug that I don't know if I'm going to be able to demonstrate to you that can be kind of obnoxious if you're using Windows Magnifier. Let's hit Windows Plus. Whoa, that's kind of big. Let's back it off a bit. Um, what can happen Reflector. is <clears throat> you <laughs> Windows Escape does not always work. So let me try Windows Escape. Okay, it did that time. I'm going to kind of go in and out of Windows Magnifier a few times just so we can maybe see if it doesn't end up working. There's no rhyme or reason. There doesn't seem to be a cause as to when it works and when it doesn't. Windows Plus always works. Windows Minus always works. So you can turn it on, you can adjust your magnification, but if you want to hit Windows Escape and go back to normal, sometimes that does and sometimes that doesn't work. And sometimes I might have a string of luck where I, it, hap it works beautifully for a while, and sometimes it'll just not work, you know, it'll just not work at all. And in those cases, what you have to do is you have to find your magnifier. If you don't, like usually what I do... Zoom in button, 200 view magnifier. Views, usually, submenu button, magnifier. Uh, usually I'll magnifier. minimize it. Okay. So if I minimize Sam, Microsoft it, Sam, it's hiding magnifier, down menu there. Button. And it still worked. Okay, so. But now if I, Microsoft's if I can't. Magnifier, menu button. Zoom out. What I have Help to button. do magnifier. is then just go up and click the X. Network 2 button, internet access. So that's something I want to show you is like if you can't do it with the keyboard shortcut, which is typically the way I would recommend doing it, um, that's kind of what I would recommend. Okay, so if I scroll down with the wheel, looks like we got our Start, list, store empty. here. This is what I was trying to do just by typing in <laughs> store in the start menu, but it apparently didn't like that. Let's see if the store is actually accessible, if I can kind of make sense with it with system access. List, store, bamboo paper, capture your creativity. I'm just down arrowing just to see. Okay, that's scrolling the page up and down. Uh, let's tab. Okay, the store does not appear to quite have uh, functionality. Game top charts and categories, link, game. What? Well, it kind of, it sort of tries to Picks read for you, link. 
I think it's reading some of those things that are switching across the top, some of those big tiles. Uh, let's try a virtual mouse. Uh -oh. uh oh. YouTube Internet Explorer. You store. Yeah, I'm in my computer, man. Virtual store. Picks for you. Six guns published by GPS satellite published by Correct. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so YouTube Internet Explorer. It kinda works, but kinda not really, so you may have some trouble with that yet. Now, just for fun, before we wrap up the video, let's close system access. List. Let's go to our desktop. Oh, you're gonna be that way. Hold on. Yeah, see now that it made my the app store made my system access mad. Ooh, it is really cranky. <laughs> um it is not having it. All right, so we're gonna have to do this all mouse. Eight shield, eight foot, sixty bandy cam button. Really made it mad. Steam seat now. Wire mic system access button. System access menu. Connect to the system access mobile network. Shut down system access. Shutting down system access. Menu closed. There we go. Okay, go away. So yeah, still kind of a work in progress in some areas. But like I said, for most common things, you're probably gonna be you're probably gonna be okay. Of course, you can use Samnet, that kind of a thing. Um, that still works perfectly fine. If I go to my desktop, Pain. NVDA, YouTube Internet Explorer. So I'm using the Microsoft, uh, what is his name? David? Uh, the Windows 10 voice right now, but I also do have the Eloquence the Sappy 5 voice if I wanted to switch to that, which I actually might just for a little bit more responsiveness and Again, the Windows voices, for some reason, they actually seem to... Hey. They seem to be a lot quieter than other voices, be it System Access, eSpeak, um, or Eloquence, whatever. <clears throat> they seem to be a little bit quieter, so that can sometimes be an issue. Let's go... I'll tab back to the store. YouTube Internet Explorer. Store row one, column two. So store let's window. see what it does. Store window. Drums published by Wicked Wolf Apps, LLC, Age of Empires registered, Castle Siege published by Microsoft right. Studios, NPR1 published by National Public, Re Assassin's Creed Unity registered companion, Gas Buddy published by G Dungeon Hunter 5 published so by GameLock.Price Free, MLB.TV, Modern Combat 5, looks like Blackout going, published by GameLock.Price Free, looks like average rating of 4.0 out of 5 that stars, in that bottom, based on in games that you have visible on the screen. Toto published by Catons, Modern Combat 5, so Blackout published, Page Combat Navigation 5. List, Home Not Selected 1 of 5, Free Plus Contains In-App Purchases Button. Okay. Uh, now when I go here, though, it's just arrowing up and down. I'm not seeming to read. Um, List. Mo all right. So there may be, again, some of these Windows apps. I still call them Metro, but some of those apps Taskbar. they seem to be a little hit and miss as far as accessibility goes. And I'm sure that'll improve over time. Um... But if you're working in a traditional, like Microsoft Office, Internet Explorer, uh, email, not the one built into Windows 10, but <coughs> a lot of your traditional desktop apps work, and getting around the core of Windows seems to generally work pretty well. I haven't used JAWS on this computer, so I really don't know how it reacts to Windows 10, but I know it's supposed to be supported. Zoom Text is supposed to have beta support for window or uh kind of the kind of beta or something like a support for windows 10 so that's working on it i believe magic i don't want to say for sure but i think magic might also be supporting or soon supporting windows 10 so we won't have to wait three years for that to actually happen again like windows 8 so that's definitely a good thing um they said there's more to Windows 10 than that, but I mean, just a basic overview. Um, I was going to do this video eventually anyway, and I really did want to record something for the, for the beginning of a video, and I figured, well, let's do more with it. Uh, but I did, again, I do want to apologize to whomever I deleted their comment by accident. That was totally an uh, accessibility issue with the YouTube app. I have written to Google about some of these accessibility issues and have not heard back from them. Um, so hopefully, because the, the app did used to work pretty well on iOS, and it still sort of does in a lot of areas, but you get to certain screens and it just goes completely screwy. Like I said, you scroll down past a video and it says 
then the whole app all it'll say is doomed, doomed, and you can't click anything with voiceover on until you close and reopen the YouTube app. So again, I apologize. Sorry about that uh, to whoever I did that to, but I hope I answered your question. And uh, for everyone else, I hope that the Windows 10 info was helpful for you. I'll probably upload this tomorrow. And uh, yeah, hope you guys found it helpful. And until next time, I will talk to you guys again. Well, actually, before I do that, I do also want to, this is a good place to mention it. Um, follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. Follow me there because once I real, realized I did screw up and delete the comment, I did mention that also on Twitter and kind of gave an answer there. So it's like even if you, uh, even if I accidentally really erased your comment on YouTube, I did try to right away answer your question via my Twitter feed. So follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. You'll get that and other tidbits here and there. But uh, yeah, little tip. Uh, otherwise, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, talk to you guys again.